So let's now talk about poles and zeros of transfer functions in particular. Okay. So, what is a pole and what is a zero? Well, if you've got a transfer function, a pole is going to be the value of the s domain variable s, which means that the function evaluates to infinity. So, if we look at the expression for a, for a transfer function, basically what we're saying is, you know, what are the values of s that set this thing to infinity? And what you see is, in order for this expression to go to infinity, we want the denominator to go to, uh, to zero, right? So, values of s which set the denominator to zero will set the overall expression to infinity. So, one is the denominator going to go to zero? Well, if we, in this particular example, we've got a denominator term of s plus 1 times s plus 3. If the s plus 1 goes to 0, the whole thing explodes to infinity. Or if the s plus 3 goes to 0, the whole thing again will go to infinity. And as we can see, the values that will set this off then to infinity um, is when s in the first part here, in the first bracket, is minus 1. Then we've got minus 1 plus 1, and this goes to 0. Or we've got s equals minus 3 in the second um, bracket term here, then minus 3 plus 3, that will set that to 0. Now, it could be that we don't just have a real value like 1 and 3 in these kinds of expressions. It could be that there's a complex number. And if there was a complex number, then we'd have a complex pole. And if we had a complex pole, what we will always find is there'll be another, which is the complex conjugate of that particular pole. So they come in pairs. And we care a lot about poles and zeros because, first of all, we can tell when the system's going to be stable and unstable. And if it's stable, we can also say a lot about the response of the system as well, the transient response. As well as having um, poles, there's obviously going to also be values um, of s in the transfer function, which are going to mean it goes to zero, right? So these are the values which are the zeros of the system. And in this particular case, you can see, look, again, looking at this expression, what we care about then, to look for zeros, is when the numerator term goes to zero. So when s is minus 2, then minus 2 plus 2 means the top numerator goes to zero, so the whole thing goes to zero. Again, if we have a zero, which is a complex number, we'd also have complex conjugate pairs of them. We can plot, in this case, poles, um, on the complex plane quite easily, and the complex plane basically is a two-dimensional representation of um, complex numbers, sort of an argan diagram, I guess. Um, and the idea is where we normally would have the x-axis, we plot the real numbers, right, along positive, this is this is the, the origins of the middle, positive parts go off to the right and negative parts go off to the left. And the imaginary components is plotted on the um, on the y-axis and the positive um, y-axis up here corresponds to positive um, complex um, imaginary parts and and so on. So we can we can basically get a lot of information about how the system is going to behave by looking at um, where the poles are um, in in this s plane. And if a if a, if a pole first of all is only a real number and has a negative real number at that, then this is going to correspond to exponential decay, right? So the actual temporal um, response of the system corresponding to this particular negative real part pole is a negative decay. Um, and if it's got no complex parts, sorry, if it's got no real parts and it's just purely real, it will decay without oscillation as well. Right. Now, because this thing could start off at any value but ends up decaying to zero, it means the system is going to be stable. Conversely, we could have um, a pole which was purely real, but this time had positive a positive value, and this will correspond to an exponential increase. Right, So we start off at some value, but it tries to tend to go, to go towards infinity. Um, if there's no com uh, no imaginary component, it will not oscillate, but it will it will still exponentially try to get to infinity. Obviously, that's a theoretical concept. If you built a real system, you couldn't do that. You couldn't ever get to infinity. If you had a let's say a, a amplifier, 
um, that was a, an op amp, um, what would happen is the output would rise up, rise up, rise up until it hit the rail of, of the power supply and then it won't go any further. But the point of the matter is it's, you know, it's not a stable system. It's gone off um, as far as it can go in the positive direction in that case, let's say. If it was a digital system, you're going to end up by overflowing your, your representation of a number. So, um, but theoretically, you know, we, we can think about infinity and say that systems which tend towards infinity are going to be unstable. We don't want that happening. Now, if we have um, an imaginary component um, on, our, on our pole, even if it's uh, a negative real part, so we have a complex pole with negative real parts, but we have imaginary components, that means it's going to correspond to some kind of oscillation. And if there's a negative um, real part, this will be then exponentially decaying in terms of an oscillation. So we have an exponentially decaying um, response for this kind of system. Um, but because it's decaying, it'll end up going to zero. And because it ends up going to zero, the system is going to be stable. Conversely, if we have a positive real part and we have imaginary components as well. It's going to be oscillating, but it's going to be going the other way. So it's going to start off um, and it's going to exponentially increase. We have this exponentially increasing window. Consequently, in a theoretical sense, this thing is going to hit infinity if you wait long enough, um, and the system is going to be unstable. Once again, of course, in the real world, we'll end up with clipping issues or we'd end up with overflow issues in the digital system. Um, but in a nutshell, this is an unstable thing and we don't want this kind of behaviour. You could ask then what happens if the poles are bang on the imaginary axis and there's no real component. Um, so this would then correspond to an oscillation, but there's no increase and no decrease. So it's going to be sustained oscillation at a certain fixed amplitude. However, if this was a real system, um, um, it just so happened to be absolutely bang on this axis. It could be that, you know, when a component heats up or um, when you put in a slightly different component at some other stage, it could be that the pole shifts slightly to have a tiny little bit of a real part, in which case the system's going to go unstable. So as it is, it's marginally stable. But this is generally not something you'd, you'd want for a control system to be, um, but it's, it is marginally stable. We can think then about what is stable and what is unstable by looking at this S-plane. And basically, stable means negative real parts. We want negative real parts and then the system's going to be stable. On the right hand, on the other hand, of the S-plane, we have positive real parts. So this is on the positive side of the, uh, of the imaginary axis. And in this case, we're going to get exponential or exponential... Um, envelope increase on value so this is where everything is considered to be unstable and we want to generally avoid that. Now let's think about a simple transfer function and then we can think about where the poles and all this kind of stuff are going to be. Um, if we say we're going to say uh, let's set the gain of this thing to one we can look at the the bode plot of this of this system. So from the bow plot, you can actually tell quite a lot about what would happen if you actually then added. Um, this is obviously this is just the, 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 a feed forward transfer function. Imagine now we use unity negative feedback, um, and we're going to ask the question: Is you know when can we then right, can we then add a bit more gain to the system such that it's all going to go unstable? And the answer is going to be yes, we can. So what we can say is, um, let's look at um, the Bode plot response. And generally what you're going to see is you're going to see some magnitude response that, that changes as, as a function of frequency, uh, depending on the characteristic. In this particular case, what we see is coming down from um, 40-ish dB and it comes down and down and down. It hits 0 dB at some point and then carries on going down and down and down. Now, what we care about for a system with feedback to be stable is, um, when do we start getting positive feedback in the system? So if I've built an amplifier, 
with this transfer function and I've got I'm going to scale this function I could change the value of k I'm going to scale this so the gain is as high as possible in the system um, when does it start going unstable and the way we can think about it is saying well it's going to go unstable when the feedback becomes positive feedback and the positive feedback will occur right when the signal we feed back is back in phase with the input and that happens by considering what happens at 180 degree phase shift because effectively that just changes the sign of the feedback. So we start off with negative feedback. If we put 180 degree phase shift in then we end up with positive feedback at that particular point. Now on our current system what we can see is at 180 degrees, you can't see it very well, but basically that's what this gain margin plot shows you. It tells you what is the gain of this system at the point where the feedback um, phase is, is 180 degrees out of phase? So this point here means that it's done a phase shift at 180. So it's saying, you know, what we care about now is what is the gain at that point? And as we can see in this particular example with, with the current K, says to one, that value is less than zero. So that's going to be stable. But the gain margin says, how much more gain do we need to add until that goes to 0 dB or unity? And if we add that much gain and we get it to having a magnitude of 1 in terms of linear response, any more than that and the system goes unstable because we're going to get positive feedback. So what this is actually telling us is, is we've got a gain margin of 15.6 and that corresponds to adding a linear gain of just a bit over six. So if we have this, this system here and we decide to use negative feedback on it, then what we're going to find is that any more gain than about six and it's going to go unstable. And we can think a little bit more about that by thinking about um, what is the overall uh, close, closed feedback uh, transfer function and in order to do that what we'd say is we look at this particular transfer function and now we're going to put it into a system where we're going to um, actually have unity feedback so we know from um, signal flow graphs if we have a, a simple unity feedback system like this which is negative feedback um, the g here corresponds to the forward transfer function which is going to be our h of s unity feedback can be represented by a single block, right? So we can just write that as g divided by 1 plus g. So we can rewrite this expression of h of s as, in terms of what's going to look like when we use unity negative feedback. And we end up with the closed loop expression, which looks like this. And the important thing to look at now is we see that there's a k on the bottom, on the, on the, on the denominator. So... The fact that there is a K now on the, on the denominator means the poles of the system are affected by K. So we, change, we can change where the poles are by changing K. And this could also mean that we can start off with a system which is stable, right? And we could move um, the poles such that the system goes unstable if we're not careful. So I won't talk about root locus here because we've already done that, but basically what we can do is we can plot how um, the poles change as we change this gain k. And uh, by doing so, we can actually find a point where we've got a certain gain that puts us marginally stable. Right? We, can, we can actually give a, um, a value of k and it will tell us where the system's going to go marginally stable. And in this particular case, it's here and it's with a gain of... 5.64 in particular in this particular case. So, well, in fact, that's that's what I've actually shown. It's probably it's going to be it's going to correspond to the actual value that we've got from the from the Boda plot. So, this value actually that goes from one to the other is actually going to be 6.0 and, and a bit, right? So, what it's saying is, our system will go unstable if the gain is more than six. And a bit right so let's imagine we've got this system now and we're gonna we're gonna run it um, in this case I'm gonna drive it with a step so that's why we're saying that the input here is going to be uh, ha have the uh, Laplace transform function of 1 over s drive it with a step 
what's going to happen to the output. Um, well, basically, it's going to put the poles such that they've got negative real parts. So it's going to be stable. And if we were to plot the output of this, you could build this in Simulink or something, or you could do it in MATLAB in a script. If we simulate this system, what we'll find is we get something that looks like this, a decaying um, sinusoid. It's decaying because the poles are negative real values, and it's a sinusoid because we've also got some imaginary components on them as well, right? However, if we now choose a value such that the gain margin is above um, this six and a bit value, so we set it at seven, then what happens is the system is now going to have poles with a, a real component which is positive, right? So now we've got a positive real component. Um, it's also got this imaginary part as well, so it's going to be oscillating, but because it's got a positive real component, it's going to have an exponentially increasing envelope and if we if we ran this as a simulation what we'd see is the output would it would be oscillating but with an increasing amplitude and if you left it forever it would go to for forever so this system therefore is um, basically unstable